السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون اللهم لا تجعلنا منهم رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحن العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأبياء والمسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين As promised I'll uh, read, some, read my own reading of the Quran and anything that really uh, strikes me I'll take note of and inshallah get um, to sharing with you and you know Ramadan schedules are difficult to adjust to so I've had a little bit of difficulty adjusting to the schedule but I think I've got the hang of what I need to be doing so probably around this time every day I'll I, I just did an Urdu session with my mom and um, I'll probably soon after that I'll just do an English session too of the daily reflections that I, I intended to share with you that just makes things easier for me for the rest of the day too inshallah and hopefully all of you will benefit from it. It's okay if you're not catching it live. You can, you know, catch it later on. And I pray that Allah just uh, gives us the benefit that is intended from this series. So this ayah is actually one of my favorite ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah. And it is something I've talked about many, many times. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur. Allah is the, the protective friend of those who believed. He brings them out of darknesses into light. And those who disbelieved, their protective friends are the Tahut. Uh, Tahut means the forces of rebellion from Tughyan. Who bring them, they bring them from light into darknesses. Those are the companions or the people of the fire in which they will remain. So this ayah uses an imagery that is uh, found across the Qur'an, the imagery of light and dark. So you'll have the parable of somebody walking in the dark, and then the lightning strikes, and their eyes eyes become, you know, they, they flash in their eyes. Or you'll have somebody who wanted to seek a light, and then as soon as the light was lit, they, you know, they went blind, or their, their light was taken away. Uh, so you have different... Uh, you know, of course, the, the parable of light in Surah An-Nur. So there's lots and lots of places in the Quran where this this this, this dialogue takes place between light and darkness, uh, and this contrast is drawn between light and darkness. And this is a way of the Quran speaking in figurative language. Allah is talking about guidance and misguidance, but He's using the words light and darkness. So there is something Allah is inviting us to to reflect on the the the, the nature of light itself. And of course, Allah Himself describes Himself, Allahu Nurus Samawati wa Allah is the light of the skies and the earth. Allah describes revelation itself as light. فَأَمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا Believe in Allah and, the mes- and His Messenger and the light that we've sent down. Um, e- even uh, the... So, so you have multiple times in the Quran, of course, angels are, are light, the guidance is light, the book of Allah is light, right? So... Uh, because of this description or this use of the word light, we have to take pause and really think about light as in not in the spiritual sense, but in the real life sense, in the everyday experience sense. What is light? What is the purpose of it? And then how can we draw a connection between that purpose and what we appreciate is happening inside of our heart if we have light inside of our hearts? So obviously light is a source of life. Without it, plant life can't exist. So it is, a, it is an essential source of nourishment and a nourishment that is constantly, you know, without vitamin D, for example, for even human beings, we can actually be deficient and we actually need sunlight for even our own personal health. There are places in the world that don't have a lot of sunlight and there are studies on how the lack of sunlight is actually maybe directly corresponding to the increase in depression and the increase in negative emotional experiences. And how light is actually emotion uh, is, is connected to lightening of moods also. Light is certainly also a source of energy. Uh, and light is definitely a source of beauty. Uh, the same place can look horrifying at night. And that same place could look stunningly beautiful in the sunlight. There are places that the same exact place can actually be terrifying. 
and it looks absolutely beautiful in the day. So some of you, for example, where you live, you look out your window or your backyard or something in the garden, there's a, there's a forest, right? And it just looks gorgeous. The green of it looks absolutely stunning during the day. And if you were to go out at night in the same garden, you'd be horrified or you'd be, it's terrifying to be in the woods in the middle of the night, right? So light takes something that otherwise didn't have any beauty in it and gives it profound beauty or the beauty that was hidden in it can only really truly come out when you have light. On a practical note, light is the only way in which we can see where we're going. Right? Without, without light, we don't have a sense of direction. So light is serving lots and lots and lots of purposes. And by the way, lighting, uh, you know, you know, without light, if we are you know, in, in the blind, then how much of the world just comes to a pause? How much of it just completely ceases to exist? So when Allah says, Allah compares faith, our belief, or the revelation, um, or the truth that he, he created us with that we already had before we even came on this earth. He compares all of that to light. He's telling us something. What we have inside us gives us a sense of direction. The faith that we have makes life beautiful. You're able to see things in it with a beauty that you couldn't see them before in. It is a source of energy and nourishment, just like light is for, for the rest of uh, creation. So it is a very powerful, beautiful thing that Allah has given us when he uses this word light to describe, you know, what we, what, where we are. And without light, obviously, we don't know what's around us. We don't know the reality of it. Imagine yourself in a completely pitch black, dark room. There's all kinds of stuff on the floor, deadly things. If your kids are there, then they left Legos on the floor, right? So many of you have been stabbed in the foot by Legos. You don't know the reality of what's in front of you. And until you do, until there's light, you don't know where you actually stand. Just like in life, without the light of Allah, I don't know where I stand. I, you know, I feel like, okay, I could just, you could just be like a robot and pass every single day. But really, where do you stand in life? Where did you, where are you headed? Are you even headed and you are you stuck in place? You can't have a sense of direction without that light. So what does Allah say in this ayah? He says, the, the thing that struck me isn't this light parable. This was just the intro. But what, in a couple of minutes, what I want to share with you is the part that really struck me about this ayah. And that was that Allah is the protective friend of those who believe that the, you know, in Ilm al Ma'ani, in one of the sciences of Arabic rhetoric, we study when um, nouns and verbs are interchanged. And nouns are something that are permanent, and verbs are something that are of a temporal, temporary nature. When Allah described Himself, in this ayah, he used a noun, and actually is some sifa, a noun that denotes kind of an adjective, permanent kind of quality. Because nouns and adjectives are different in English, but they're one and the same thing in Arabic. So it's an ism sifa, wali. Uh, and that is someone who is always protecting and looking out for the best interest of someone else to the point where they are taking care of someone else in a protective way. That's a wali. Allah is always looking out for my best interest and always there to protect who? Alladina amanu, those who've come to the faith. Well, this is amazing to me because you know it's a it's a generic term too, those who believed. But the amanu is in the fi'il maldi, which implies inside of it there are people who accepted the faith, right? They accepted the faith or they realized that they should be more conscious of a believer 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whenever. They had an awakening, or they came, they accepted Islam, they, they came to the faith. Allah says he is now permanently on their side now that they've come to the faith. But just because they came to the faith doesn't mean they were able to live up to that faith. That means they messed up along the way. Maybe they slipped and fell. Maybe they were much better when they started and then they got rusty. Maybe they kept spiraling down a very dark road. And now they start feeling like, man, when I was good, Allah was with me. And now I'm not. I messed up. Allah is no longer with me. Look at the ayah. Allah uses the permanent word for himself, even though you only accepted the faith in the past, and we don't know where you stand now. And then what does he say? يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ The mudari, the immediate switch from amanu to يُخْرِجُهُمْ Those who believe, he brings them out. The present tense. He brings them, and the mudari in Arabic, includes the, the, the present and it includes the future. The present tense in Arabic incorporates the future. He brings them out of darknesses into light and he will continue to do so. 
the wording is so powerful because someone who has already come to faith, why in the world would they be in darknesses? Because darkness has come in many shades. Maybe you're not in the darkness of disbelief anymore. But maybe you fell into the darkness of temptation. Maybe you fell into the darkness of greed or despair or hopelessness or laziness. Or maybe a combination of all of them. Maybe one, one darkness led to another and led to another. And before you knew it, you were just buried deep inside many, many darknesses. And what is Allah saying in this ayah? Just because you buried, you fell and you buried yourselves in darknesses, I buried myself in darknesses, Allah didn't stop being my wadi. He still, no matter how far down I've, and the more, when you start falling, guess what happens to people around you? People around you like, how could you fall? How could you do this? I thought you were a believer. You know? And so they, they will write you off. You are now permanently written off because you've fallen. But Allah is continuing to be your wali, even in your lowest moment. And even now, He's extending His rope, pulling you out of those darknesses towards the light. His rope never got cut off. People got cut off. You cut yourself off. You gave hope in yourself. I gave hope in myself. People gave up hope, gave hope, hope in us. People wrote us off. But Allah never did. Allah says, يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ He pulls people out of darknesses into light. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ And those who have disbelieved, their protective friends are the ta'ghut, the, the rebellious, the extremely rebellious. They do the opposite. What the opposite is as, as a separate contemplation. I actually wanted to focus on that first remarkable Reality about Allah and the and the faulty believer. It's not just Allah and the great believer. Allah and the faulty believer. Allah and the, and the broken believer. Allah and the sad and hopeless believer. Allah and, and the believer who fell deep into sin, deep into sin, and now thinks Allah has given him up, given up on him, and Allah is say, saying to you that He is your wali. Allahu waliyul ladina amanu. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ To me, that's, it's so, so powerful that Allah Azza wa Jalla said this. And by the way, the next ayat are going to be bringing the dead back to life. So, so epic. That the next ayat are about bringing, bringing the dead back to life. And actually, the, the ayah right before, in 255, 256, was Allahu la ilaha illa huwa Allah, the, the, the eternally living, al hayy Why is that relevant? Because we feel like spiritually we're dead. And Allah, and, and you know, when, when a plant is in the darkness, it's dead. And when it's in the light, it comes, it's nourished, it's back to life. And Allah is pulling you back into light, which is bringing you back to life, even though you thought you were dead. Even though you thought you were dead. SubhanAllah. And Allah Azza wa Jalla continued to pull us out of all of our darknesses, the deep, dark ones and the lighter shaded ones. Pull, out of, pull us out of all of them towards His light and to remove all the darknesses that we have inside of us that are taking us away from Him. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.